Hi everyone, I'll be virtualizing macOS using VirtualBox. Virtualizing is great for testing and development, but it can be difficult to virtualize macOS. If you need the install media, but you don't have access to the App Store, you won't be able to download it. Sure, you can download it from somewhere, but you never know for sure what's on it, so it's best to get it straight from Apple. There are a lot of configuration changes you need in order to virtualize macOS, which can be troublesome and frustrating. Fortunately, there is a push button macOS VirtualBox installer available on GitHub that you can use to get you up and running, and by default, it will install Catalina. First, we'll need to change the boot configuration so that Hyper-V doesn't launch on boot. Open the command prompt as administrator. And the second thing is to turn off memory isolation. And I'll need to reboot my machine so the changes take effect. After it's rebooted, I'm going to download and install VirtualBox. Okay, it's done installing. And to download the Mac OS VirtualBox script on GitHub, so we're going to search for Mac OS VirtualBox GitHub and it's the push button installer. And so it's from the user MySpaghetti. So this is the script here. I'm going to download it. I'm going to go back. And so I'm going to be installing Sigwin in order to have the script run. So I'll search for Sigwin download, Sigwin. And it's asking to pick a download site. So I'll pick this mirror here, mirror.clarkson.edu. And there's some additional packages that we'll have to have installed. So if we go back to GitHub here, and at the bottom, it discusses about the dependencies here. So then we'll need to get these here and go back. So bash core utils and gzip is already here. So we need uh, unzip wget xxd. So just double click on it. And then the next one, wget. Double click and then XXD. Double click and then the last one here. This will be installed during the installation process when we install Mac OS. So just going to skip that and we're going to continue. So it's listing all of the packages that are going to be installed. Okay, Sigwin is installed and going back to the downloads directory. And so here is the script and I'm gonna open it up. Open up with notepad. And so here are the variables here and I'm just going to increase the amount of RAM. Instead of four gigs, I'm gonna put eight gigs. And the CPU profile will have to change this. So I'm gonna be changing it from host to Intel Core i7-6700K. And then I'm going to save it. I'm going to close it now. I'm going to open up the Sigwin terminal. So I need to go to the downloads directory. And so that's going to be under CD SIG drive. And then it'll be my C drive. And then it'll be users. KMD tech downloads. And so here's the script I'm going to run. So it shows all of the variables here. Mac OS, it's going to be the name of the VM, Catalina, the amount of hard disk space, the CPU profile, the amount of CPUs, memory, the amount of GPU VRAM, and the resolution. 
Okay, now it's downloading Catalina from Apple, and this will take some time, depending on how fast your internet connection is. Okay, it's done downloading. Now it's configuring the VM. Okay, now we see here that it's at the language screen. So we'll go back into SIGWIN and then press enter when the language window is ready. And here, press enter when the Mac OS utilities window is ready. And here, press enter when the terminal command prompt is ready. So it's going to be partitioning. Okay, now the VM will boot from the populated installer and just waiting for the language window. And the language window is ready. So I'm going to hit enter. And the Mac OS utilities window is ready. Hit enter. And the terminal command prompt is ready. Hit enter. All right, and it's now doing the install. Okay, now it's at the Mac setup screen. So it's at the welcome screen here. Pick my country. Okay, so after the setup portion there, Catalina is now installed and ready for use. The temporary files that were created in my downloads folder here for the Catalina installation, uh, they can be deleted after the VM is powered off and without a suspended state. So I'm going to power off right now, shut down, copy this, and I'm going to paste it. And it's asking to delete all the files. Yes. Okay, so all the temporary files have been removed. And if I go back into VirtualBox, and I can power it back on. All right, I'm back in. So that's it. That's how you can use the push button Mac OS VirtualBox installer. I hope this video was useful, and I thank you for watching. Bye now.